Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Move Your BIM 360 Data Before Your Free Trial Ends. Before we get started, I encourage you to check out the witches below. I've got a beautiful resource list there for you that you'll want to check out. Be sure to visit our website, asti.com, to see how to achieve your design and business objectives through our innovative solutions, training opportunities, and services. And a little plug for myself, make sure to visit asti.com slash webinars. You'll be able to view this webinar there along with several other free webinars around pretty much any subject you're interested in. And in the resource widget, I've included the BIM 360 Family Tree, a free ebook written by Mark Petrucci. He is on this webinar. Uh, Michael Reuter and our very own Carol Dunn. It is very helpful and, like I said, free. So next, we're going to open up a poll question, and I'm going to introduce Blake and Mark. Blake, how are you doing? Great. Thanks, Alyssa. And Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing good, and I can hear you just fine. Thank you. Good. Thank you. And... The poll question is, what are you planning to do when the EAP expires in June 30th? Now, Blake and Mark, what have you seen some solutions that people are coming up with? What are people doing? Yeah, one of the main things is obviously just purchasing BIM 360. Uh, a lot of our customers and users have seen a lot of value during this extended access program that Autodesk gave to help alleviate some of the pains of uh, the new world that we live in with COVID and having to uh, work with uh, extended teams from uh, remote locations, primarily from home. So uh, a lot of people see fantastic use in that and want to continue to utilize it, uh, especially as uh, different mandates come down and we have to uh, adjust and, and work in, in this new world. Uh, but then some other users are uh, looking to get off of BIM 360. They, they used it uh, pretty regularly during the extended access program, but uh, not quite sure that they want to make a purchase just yet. So trying to get their info out of BIM 360 so that they can keep it and continue to use it uh, for their various projects is another option. And then we've got some folks that um, aren't going to do anything, didn't really use the trial. And uh, for those people, we, we invite you to, to stick around and hopefully we can show you some additional value in BIM 360 um, and, and go from there. Uh, but then some other users, uh, hopefully a lot of you folks here on the line, just not sure, um, don't know what their options are, uh, don't know how they can continue to use it or um, continue to use the data that was put inside of M360. So uh, we invite you to, to select those options there and we'll take a little uh, pulse on the, on the group here. Yeah, and yeah. with that, we're going to... Oh, sorry, Mark. I, I had most no, everyone I'm, submit. That's okay. I was just going to echo uh, what Blake said and, you know, just make sure that people understand that, you know, you have to make a decision by June 30th. So it's important that we cover these, um, the topics we're going to cover today that, that we presented to you so that um, there's no surprises come July 1st. <laughs> Absolutely. And it looks like we're, we're pretty split. 40% uh, are just going to purchase, 40% aren't sure, and 20% of you want to just get that information off BIM 360. We're here to help all of you today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Blake to share his screen. Blake, over to you. Perfect. So I'll share here. Can you see it, Alyssa? Hold on. Yes, I can. Go ahead. All righty. So as we go through uh, this extended trial transition, and, and uh, a lot of you had selected that you're looking to um, purchase BIM 360, but then some of you are looking to get the information off of BIM 360. And hopefully during this presentation, those of you that were not quite sure um, will give you enough options so that uh, by the end of this, hopefully you are sure and we can help you out. Uh, so you're here because the extended access program is ending on June 30th. Uh, per Autodesk, uh, users will lose access. Want to be clear about that, losing access to BIM 360 as of July 1st. Uh, that's not to say that the data is going to go away. Uh, the data is still going to be available until July 31st. So once that trial expires, you've got 30 days 
of that uh, still being in the cloud, uh, not necessarily accessible, but still existing in that cloud environment. Uh, so what happens come June 30th is that your users will no longer be able to access the project data itself. And um, you would have to then go ahead and purchase a BIM 360 license just to gain access so that we can then potentially uh, continue to work in that BIM 360 environment or uh, buys us a little bit more time to move the data. Uh, as you can see there by that last bullet point, um, we have the ability to convert uh, all of these trials over to a paid license. The big thing there with the paid license is we highly, highly encourage you to do it before June 30th. Uh, if we get to June 30th, uh, there's always a hiccup that could happen, uh, information gets transcribed incorrectly, uh, whatever the case may be, we don't want July first to come around and you to be locked out. So those of you that intend to uh, go ahead and convert your trial over to a paid license, we really encourage you to reach out to Applied Software and have us uh, help you with that trial conversion process. One of the main things that we want out of that, um, out of your BIM 360 account is going to be your account ID. So I brought up our example here. And at the top, you'll see in between the admin slash and the settings slash, that code there, alphanumeric code, is your account ID. So if you're in any admin activity within BIM 360, that's how you can get access to that number. Uh, but additionally, if you're in your account admin and you go to the settings tab, and the first tab that you'll land on is profile, down in the bottom left here, you'll have the ability to click this view account ID. Um, this is the only, really the only piece of information that you'll need to supply um, ASTI with, and we can uh, convert that over to a full paid subscription for you. Now, for those of you that are not buying BIM 360, uh, you've got a couple of options, and we'll walk through these options here uh, today. Uh, the first is going to be manually downloading your BIM 360 data, uh, and there is a key distinction there in how you download with the plan section versus the project file section. And we'll go through that as I uh, walk through uh, the demo of BIM 360. But then also there is an applied software tool that we've built, uh, we've, we've had it for a number of years now, called 360 Sync. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, 360 Sync, we'll go through the details, but ultimately it's a way to uh, migrate all of the data, uh, all of the documents that reside inside of BIM 360 very easily to a number of different tools. And really, really excited this morning, I, this afternoon for some of you uh, to announce that we've created some additional offerings around 360 Sync specific to this end of the extended access program, uh, the do it yourself option and the white glove option. And we'll discuss the details of both of those. Uh, but then you also have the, the one year subscription that we have uh, previously offered. So let's talk about that manual data download. So the beauty of it is that we're gonna have no additional tools needed, no requirements of you to go buy anything, to purchase anything. Uh, it's already built into BIM 360 as a tool to get that information out of the cloud environment. Uh, the downfall of that is that it's very time consuming and I'll show you inside of BIM 360 why that can be. Uh, but additionally, it's error prone. There's potential for you to put miss some of the data that's inside of your BIM 360 environment. You truly have to go through project by project to manually download. Um, so let's actually go into that right now. So over here in BIM 360, I'm in one of our example projects. And in the plan section, you'll notice we've got a couple of folders here. And if we select one of these folders, 
we're kind of limited in terms of what our options are. Um, we can share this, but that's sharing a public link that links back to the BIM 360 environment. So not necessarily getting the information out via a share. It's really just sharing a link back to BIM 360 itself. And moving, this is just moving it within the BIM 360 environment. So changing it from uh, the coordinate space, maybe it becomes a subfolder under that RVT file. So move isn't going to help us. And normally we would be able to select this. And again, you'll notice this limits our options even further. So in the plan section, what you have to do is you have to go into a folder and get to the lowest subfolder level. Again, here selecting these options, we're still limited in terms of what we can do. But once we go down to the lowest subfolder and we get to some of these files, then we have the ability to come in and download the source files. So like I mentioned, uh, this manual process can be tedious because we'll have to go into every one of the lowest subfolder categories and grab those individual files to download the source file. Now it does get quite a bit easier when we get to project files. Uh, for those of you that don't know the distinction between the two, plans is going to separate out the Revit model into its different uh, views, elevations, uh, 3D views, et cetera, as well as our PDFs are gonna become individual sheets uh, rather than a full uh, document set. Whereas our project files, it keeps all of that information together. It keeps the model holistic. It keeps all those PDF files uh, together more or less in one book. And what that ultimately allows us to do then is come in here and we can download the source file of all of the folders, all of the subfolders within them and all the documents within those. So project files uh, gets a little bit easier. But uh, as you can see, pretty tedious to go through the plans or even go into every single one of the projects, select all of the folders inside of project files, and then download those. Now, the download is going to download based on your browser specifications. So if your browser says download everything to the downloads folder, that's where all this information is going to go. Then you're going to have to disseminate it from there. So if we um, want to kind of remediate some of the headache with that, this is not an applied software tool. It's not an Autodesk tool. It's just something that I've used in the past that I think is really kind of neat, and I tell people about it. It's called the Downloads Router Plugin for Google Chrome. Now, this is specific to Chrome. If you're using other browsers, you have the ability to go in, um, do a quick search for uh, a download router for that specific browser. The nice thing about this is when you add it to Chrome, you have the ability to tell it where you want your downloads to go based on the web page that you're on. So if you are in a specific project, you can create a project folder, download to that all of that information directly to uh, that project folder. A little tip there to help you out, but still uh, the manual process uh, can be tedious. So what's the, what's the better solution? Uh, it's going to be 360 Sync. So 360 Sync is going to automate your data migration, moving it directly from BIM 360 to any other uh, location that we support. And we'll get into uh, the supported uh, tools in the next slide. But with those new offerings, uh, we have some really useful uh, use cases of 360 Sync. The first is going to be our 360 sync DIY, your do it yourself. Those are for you uh, a little bit more tech savvy users. We're going to give you a 14 day use of the 360 sync tool uh, that will include kind of the initial setup, uh, getting the Forge application uh, installed into your BIM 360 environment and uh, helping with kind of that initial training, get you going, and then uh, we'll take the training wheels off and it's up to you to go ahead and start to move your data. And I'll show you a quick little demonstration of 360 Sync shortly so that you can see truly how easy it is. For those of you that want a little bit more of a hands-off approach, you want uh, all your data to move seamlessly, but you don't necessarily want the responsibility of doing it yourself, uh, we've created the 360 Sync White Glove solution. So this is a turnkey solution. Uh, 
we're going applied software is going to do all of your data migration we're going to move it for you kind of at your direction where you want it to go um, how you want your folder structures and those sort of things to be set up and then we also have the uh, 360 sync option which uh, we have had in the past uh, but continuing to offer that it's going to be unlimited data unlimited projects for that one year subscription now, the thing to note here with all of these is that we still need to have access to that BIM 360 data. So if you're planning on moving it and you want to um, get it moved over quickly, we highly encourage you to reach out and uh, let us start this process for you because come June 30th, we won't have access to it. If we get to a point where we're um, into July, let's say uh, you choose the 360 sync DIY. It's taking you a little bit longer to move some of that data. We move into that July timeframe, uh, reach out to Applied, and we'll have to look at um, updating that subscription license for uh, BIM 360 temporarily to uh, get you that access that you'll need to move the data. So here you can see 360 Sync ties to a lot of different tools. Uh, it's purpose built for construction industry. So you can see we've got a lot of construction specific tools, Procore, Bluebeam, uh, Autodesk Vault, and it ties to all of the BIM 360 data. So uh, no matter what flavor of BIM 360 you've been utilizing during this extended access program, we have a solution to move it for you. Uh, one of the solutions that a lot of our customers are migrating that data to can be a number of different cloud offerings. You'll see those down here in the bottom left. Those tools are based on a connection to Windows. So even if it's not necessarily listed here, but it still has a Windows connection, uh, we could still move it to uh, that cloud environment for you. Uh, this will allow your extended teams to still have access to that data. You can put them on a, uh, a centralized server that's window-based or any other location you see fit that is Windows-based, we can move if it's not specifically uh, listed here. So let's jump into a quick demonstration of 360 Sync. Here's the 360 Sync tool. I've added a configuration here. And within this configuration, it's going to connect to our various data sources. Inside of this, then, we have the ability to add multiple mappings. So if you want different project data to go to different tools, different locations, we can very easily do that. And within this, the beauty of this is that we don't have to go through um, folder by folder. We simply have to go through the different projects we can go in and move specific folders to different locations. So if you want to move your plans folder to one location or specific folders within the plan section to a location, we can do that. Um, or we can come in, grab all the project files, all the plans, everything from this project and move it. And then we designate where we're going to move that inside of, in this case, a Windows environment or any of those other uh, project tools. Once we've created this, we have the ability to create a launch shortcut that'll uh, create the essentially a button on your desktop where we can just double click that. It'll run 360 sync in the background, moving all the data according to the configuration that we set up. But additionally, we can run it on a schedule. So we can select which days we want to run it on. We can determine exactly when we're going to start it, how often we're going to do it. So if you're continuing to operate inside of the BIM 360 environment, we highly encourage you uh, to continually update until uh, maybe we get to that deadline where we're being cut off on, on July 1st. So just a great tool to make sure that your teams can continuously and seamlessly operate within BIM 360. And you'll notice here, um, it took about five minutes or so, maybe less, and I moved every single one of my plans folders 
uh, over to the Windows environment. Uh, it brings in all of your Revit files, all of your Excel files, all the subfolders, anything that might be hosted in that environment is going to be uh, moved over seamlessly. So with that, Alyssa, do we have any questions that have come through? Uh, looks like we do have one. If I signed up for BIM 360 design and created a project, how do I move files from my project to my company's accounts? That's a great question. There's no way to do that natively within BIM 360. Uh, there isn't a connection between your accounts. Now that said, 360 Sync can move project data between two separate BIM 360 accounts. Uh, so the suggestion there is uh, utilize the uh, 360 Sync DIY or the white glove, since it'd probably be a, a temporary solution for you. Get that data moved over to the company account and continue to utilize it from there. Or I guess if you're going to continue to operate in kind of that multi-account uh, environment where you have your own account and the, the business has its account, um, you could continue to utilize a, a full license of 360 Sync over the course of that year subscription. So you do have some options, but 360 Sync uh, really is the answer there. Love to hear it. And please please start to submit your questions below in the Q&A widget. We do have another one coming through. Does 360, bleh, does 360 Sync provide a report of any successful or unsuccessful downloads? It does. So every time that it's run, a log is created. Uh, what will happen when something is unsuccessful the first time 360 sync is programmed to actually try to do it two more times for a total of three times. So if for whatever reason, um, a server isn't accessible, um, internet connection goes down initially, but then comes right back. 360 sync will try it up to three times to move the data. Um, after every synchronization, whether it's a manual where you're pressing the button or it's on a scheduled event, it's going to create a log. Uh, that log will give you some good information for all of the uh, data files that were moved, but also in the event that something goes wrong, uh, it's pretty rare, but it does happen. Uh, in the event that something goes wrong, you can share that log with us. We're happy to uh, help you troubleshoot and get things sorted out. All right, hold on. It looks like I have a, another question that just popped through. Does the connection to other programs like SharePoint work the same as what you demoed? It does, yeah. So all of the connections are basically going to be built out the same way. You're going to designate um, the from location and the to location. There's going to be some uh, login, some, some form of credentials that we'll have to put in when we set up those connections. So for example, if we're moving from uh, BIM 360 to a SharePoint site, you'll have your BIM 360 credentials. Uh, the Forge application creates some pieces of information that we'll uh, put into the tool. And then you'll have obviously your uh, login information for that SharePoint site. Once those connections are created, uh, mapping how we're going to move the data from, in this case, BIM 360 to SharePoint is just like I demonstrated before, where you'll, you'll define exactly what folder it's going to go to inside of uh, SharePoint. And that is a part of all of the 360 sync offerings is helping you to set up those connections. So getting connected to your SharePoint site getting connected to your BIM 360 site, getting connected to your uh, Bluebeam Studio environment. All of that is included in uh, the initial setup. Fabulous. And someone just asked, just to reiterate, if I am downloading our files from BIM 360, I will need to recreate the central models as they will no longer be central models when downloaded. That is correct. Mark, do you want to elaborate on that? Sure. Yep. Um, they will actually be just like any other central model that when you move it from one server location to another, that you do have to make it a new central file again so that it, it will acquire the um, idea of the server that it's located on. So it's just a matter of 
downloading it, opening it up in Revit, hit Create Central, and, and you just um, select the folder on your server, and then it'll behave just like it, it, it has always behaved. Well, there you go. Uh, if you have any additional questions about that, please make sure to drop them in the chat. And I have another question. How long is training if I do it myself? Um, training is only about uh, 30 minutes to an hour at most. Uh, as you can see in the demo, it's a pretty simple tool. Um, so our team really is there to help you get up and running very, very quickly, um, get you off and running. And then as you do have things, maybe nuanced aspects of the tool or um, specific elements that maybe we didn't discuss in the training itself, uh, you can feel free to, to reach out to us and we're happy to help you um, solve that, that immediate problem. For sure, I have the email icon below, and if you're if you need any help with that, just type us an email, and we'll be happy to help you out. I have another question. We have several users who created their own BIM 360 trial accounts. All of those projects that were created have been recreated under one user's trial. We've purchased BIM 360 subscriptions. What is the next step? contact ASTI and provide the account number for that particular user? Do we need to recreate the project team after moving to subscription? Yeah, so with that, um, we'll have to do a lot of um, kind of recreation of the different project teams inside of the account that's going to be continued to use. Uh, we'll also have to look at how we're going to move some of that data, whether we'll move it uh, manually or with a tool like 360 Sync. Um, so I, I invite you to uh, reach out to us uh, about the specifics and how we can go, excuse me, go about uh, taking care of that. All right. Yes, we definitely encourage you to reach out and we are happy to help in any way that we can. That looks like all the questions we have for now. Blake, are you good? Or are you good with me closing it out? Damn, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump to that uh, that poll question. Oh, all right. Uh, that will pop up at the end. Perfect. Uh, as we close out, make sure to answer our poll, uh, and we will get back with you with any questions you have. I think we have an open box for you, uh, or click that email icon below. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Mark. This is extremely helpful, especially right now. Thank you, guys. And thank you to everyone for joining us today. We appreciate you spending your time with us and trust it was a meaningful and impactful for you and your business. I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>